Hello, I am here to talk about post-modernity. Why not? And behind me is a figure of post-modernity, a Star Wars doll of, I guess, one of the fascist people on the Dark Force. All right. Now that Star Wars, it, it's post-modern in the sense that people freak out about it and the pop culture and the so-called art culture are impossible to separate. That's part of post-modernity. We'll talk about it. But now I will sit down and be serious because that's what you can do with post-modernity. You can go from being facetious to serious like a race car goes from zero to 60 in three seconds. All right. The height of modernity. Let's take a book like this. William Carlos Williams Patterson. All right. That was both at the triumph and the decline of modernity. When authors could not only write experimentally in a self-conscious, deliberate way, but it actually had a market. Right. And a market that wasn't just among other artists the book could be published and actually be on book stands and magazine stands. So there was this acceptance of experimentation and post-modernity to a certain extent is an experimentation that rebels against experimentation. So if you wanted to see it that way, you could say that it looked at modernity with this priesthood of the high artist, the artist in his tower, detached. As William Carlos Williams said, emotion's proper place was with prose, not poetry. All right, it was this whole idea of we are the priests of art, which came from Walter Pater, that cold gem-like flame. Post-modernity rebelled against that, but it rebelled against it in many contradictory ways. And the truth is, even at the height of modernity, most of the traits of post-modernity were already present. Pastiche, camp, for instance, when T.S. Eliot has in the middle of the wasteland, oh, 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 you Shakespearean rag. And he's goofing on the, um, the, the popular zeitgeist of his moment, which was ragtime. All right. Post-modernity breaks down the walls between so-called popular culture and the former high culture. It does it for, for various reasons. All right. There isn't one reason why these walls would be broken down. All right. It isn't just because we think these walls were false all the law. That's one of the reasons. But another reason could be vamping and mocking the ruling elite. All right. Taking control of what has previously excluded you. So in the terms of camp, all right, say queer culture said, I'm going to turn art on its head. I've been a vital part of art for centuries, and yet it's time to do these, to incorporate parts of the queer culture into the arts. All right. Black culture. There would be no modernity with what you might call the black imaginary. There would just not be any because everything that modernity supposedly was, so called activism, which came from a misrepresentation of the Negro and other non white cultures as somehow being closer to the uh, primal, all right, that horrible form of racism a noble savage and everything, but activism. But then also vamping, mocking whitey. All right. Take, doing takeoffs on the so-called society culture. All right. All these forms of parody, pastiche, vamping, they come out of the black imaginary. All right. And so does modernity to a very great extent. It is an othering of the straight of the so-called entrenched high society. All right. 
partially wrought by the high society itself, all right, and at the same time also partially done by these outed groups or these the, these alienated groups that decided to take uh, and fragment and mock the, the preceding rhetorical apparatus of, of the arts. Um, no ideas, but in things was a modern construct. All right. Postmodernity plays with everything. You might say that postmodernity is the return of tunefulness to contemporary classical music, if you want to call it classical, contemporary serious music, okay? Uh, and hyper, sometimes a hyper return to tunefulness, as in the works of Philip Glass, where he does just a series of arpeggios that are not only tonal, but you might call them hypertonal. All right. Um, hyperliteralism. All right. You can only go so far with the irony, and everybody gets the joke because people know the culture that's being mocked. But once you've destroyed any cultural coherence, you can no longer use irony as your chief tool. And so the chief tool becomes an almost Asperger's hyperliterality, hyperliteralism. If you take something and you look at it in a hyperliteral manner, all right, it'll seem like a kind of supreme irony. All right, so I would say postmodernity is not so much irony based. I think that's more a thing of modernism. It's more hyperliteral. All right, and that's part of the postmodern shtick. All right, but as I said, pastiche, parody, sending up the, the so-called straight culture, all right, mixing forms, all right, that's really important. Um, non-linearity, but non-linearity is ancient. In fact, almost, in fact, everything post-modernity does has been done before in literature, in music, in art, all right, there's nothing new under the sun. In a sense, postmodernity says that. All we have are tropes to play with, and we're going to play with them. It's going to be this play. And the purpose of it is to a certain extent tied in with deconstructionism, but not completely, but tied in with the idea that we have nothing but fragments and shards. Right. They piece together, they don't make add up to anything, except for the repetition of tropes. So we will play with these. So you might see postmodernity in that sense. Another way to look at it is through, lately, I don't think this is postmodern. I think this is a return to pre-modern art, spoken word. Very tied in with issues of identity and self-affirmation and group affirmation. All right. And they do all have a common they out right now, which would be the straight, white, heteronormative culture. All right. But that's gonna fade. Just like the common enemy of, of old 19th century rhetoric and romanticism, once it was vanquished, faded for modernity. So I don't know what's going to come out of that. That's the future. What happens when you win? That's always a good question. Now, uh, in some respects, post-modernity is all pervasive now. You see it in TV shows on Netflix. All right. You see non-linearity in movies. All right. You see most of the tricks that were considered you know, in hypertext and and the idea of metafiction. All right, breaking down the fourth wall. Breaking down the fourth wall was being done in Bob Hope, Bing Crosby movies, and before that, done in Marx Brothers movies. All right, in fact, I would say the Mar Marx Brothers were the first postmodernists. They mocked on The Emperor Jones, a play by Eugene O'Neill, one of their movies. So postmodernity was around before the 40s and 50s, but that's when the term came into use. 
and when it really caught on. All right. And so instead of going by what I'm saying, let's go by what it said here in the Dictionary of Literary Terms and Literary Theory by Penguin. Okay. And basically, they're not saying much more different than I did. All right. Postmodernism, a general and sometimes controversial tune, tune term, sorry, used to refer to changes, developments, and tendencies which have taken place and are taking place in literature, art, music, architecture, philosophy, etc., since the 1940s and 50s. Postmodernism is different from modernity, modernism. That's one thing we, we have a faith in. They don't explain how it's different, since there are elements of post-modernity and modernity. It's a poria. It's resistance. This is a now post-structural theory. The resistance to anything is within the thing itself. All right. So at any rate, modernism, even a reaction against it. So it can be, post-modernity can be a reaction against modernity, against that self-conscious, experimentalism such as in William Carlos Williams Patterson all right or James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake or anything like that it is no easier to define than many other terms like them it is amorphous by nature well isn't that nice to know so it's a word that everybody thinks they know but nobody can really put down it's perfect the truth is that these kind of amorphous terms are post-modernity. Well, it's not that. It's not that at all, Prufrock was saying as early as 1909. That's the cry of the hipster, so to speak, the stereotypical hipster. No matter what you say, that's not it. The hipster will not commit to a statement because then he can be held accountable for the that's not it. The whole thing is to be in the know without letting on you know, or, or explaining yourself, right? So that, that can be part of it too. To talk of postmodernism is to imply that modernism is over and done with. This is not so. So everything's a contradiction here, canceling out. There never is a neat demarcation line. Originally, avant-garde movements in literature and the arts in general were modernist avant-garde influences and they continue it might be said that there is a new avant-garde besides postmodernism is still happening when something else develops from it or instead of it it will perhaps be easier to identify describe and classify as far as literature is concerned it is possible to to describe certain features in postmodernism. For instance, there is literature which seems to be non-traditional and against authority and signification. Here one may cite experimental techniques, but that's modernity. In fiction, as displayed in the Nouveau Roman, which by the way, Nouveau Romans, the new novel or the, all right, that was more, you could even see that as modernity and the ante novel. All right. In some cases, these looked perilously close to mere gimmickry. Well, experimentalism often does because it's hard to distinguish between experimentalism and novelty. You know, novelty is something you can only do once. All right. To me, originality has origin in it. It has a future. All right. So there's a difference between originality and novelty. And much of both modernity and postmodernity are based on novelty rather than originality. So you might just as easily use the term post-originality for postmodernity, and you wouldn't be far off the mark since it likes to take from different sources. It likes to reference. All right. It's sort of post making it up. The romantics are into originality, all right? Making it new for a postmodernist means stitching together old things in a new way. All right, so let's think about this. All right, there's also been 
experimentate experiment. All right. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to read this, and it's kind of dark in here. And with what is called concrete poetry, though there is nothing particularly postmodernist about that, or even modernist for that matter. That's right. They've always said it. Or erasures for that matter. Or erasures are nothing new. You know, the Egyptians, when they wanted to, when they wanted to discredit Ken and King, they cut off the noses on his, on his statue. They defaced it. They erased it. All right. They changed it. All right. Let's look at this. Gentos, for instance. Gentos have been around since Latin poetry. The burgeoning of Marx's feminist and psychoanalytic criticism since the 1970s is yet another aspect of postmodernity. It also refers to a critical position in criticism in which a complete relativism exists. All right. That relativism is, for instance, suddenly Dashiell Hammett or a pop TV show, popular TV show, becomes art. It gets taken seriously. It gets analyzed the way art used to be analyzed. It gets a close reading. It has critics surrounding it. Madonna, for instance. Madonna becomes surrounded by by critics or cultural critics. So that's part of postmodernity too. All right, postmodernity means anything is art if you say it is. You could make that argument. Because people say, oh Joe, that's that's crabby. But what's wrong with Emperor's New Clothes? Since we really have to admit that the subjective is pretty much all pervasive. And I would leaven that comment by saying that anything is art if you say it is, and you are given the authority by your culture to be the sayer. You are a gatekeeper. You're a crit cultural critic who is given authority. You're Zadie Smith, okay? You're Helen Vendler. You're who, uh, Marjorie Perlman. Right. You can't just be Joe Schmo or Joe Me, for instance, and say this is art and have anybody follow you or believe it's authentic. So authority has a lot to do with postmodernity. Unfortunately, authority has a lot to do with contemporary art. Not community, but those in authority who say so. We'll leave it at that. Maybe the new thing coming up, the post, beyond post-modernity, is communal art and the end of gatekeepers. We'll see.